In this video, we are going to discuss about the second type of ratios that is solvency ratio. As we all know that solvency means the ability of an enterprise to pay its long-term debts or long-term liabilities. Generally, the companies or firms are lend, uh, borrowing money from financial institutions or public. So it is a concern of those financial institutions and also the public to check whether the investment they are making is safe or not. Whether there is a whether the company is able to pay off this debt in the near future. So that is known as the solvency. So the important solvency ratios we are going to study over here are depth to equity ratio, proprietary ratio, depth to total assets ratio and interest coverage ratio. Starting with depth to equity ratio, as the name suggests, it is a relationship between depth and equity. So depth to equity ratio means the formula is long term depth divided by long uh, equity. So here we are whenever we are talking about the depths in solvency ratio we are talking about the long term depths because short term depths are a part of current liabilities and it is and it is used in calculating the liquidity ratios so long term depths and equity equity generally means the capital invested in the firm so long term debt includes long term borrowings and long term provisions equity also known as shareholders fund this includes share capital that is equity share capital preference share capital and reserve and surplus why reserve and surplus because it is also a part of the profit it's part of the profit so it is included in the shareholders fund so if you remember in the balance sheet there come assets and liabilities in the liabilities the first item which comes under liability is share capital that is shareholders fund which includes share capital then reserve and surplus comes. There is another formula for finding out the shareholders fund that is from the total assets that is total asset means fixed assets plus current assets if I deduct the non-current liabilities that is long term borrowings and long term provision and also we deduct the current liabilities we will get the shareholders fund this is the from the balance sheet actually this is the formula we are deriving from the balance sheet now depth to equity ratio is generally showing the margin of safety to the long term lenders because the long term lenders uh, have concern over where they are investing their money whether the money will the principal amount and the interest amount they'll get will whether they will get this amount in the near future or not so this ratio is generally showing them whether the money is safe or not now the ideal debt to equity ratio is 2 is to 1 that means if my equity is 100 i can take a depth of 200 so when a company is having a equity of say 1 lakh the debt it can take is of rupees 2 lakh that is an ideal or satisfactory ratio now if the ratio is higher that shows that the financial position is risky if the ratio is lower it indicates that it has safe financial position that means my the company is having the having less depth Moving on to the next type of ratio that is depth to total assets ratio. The, from the name itself again we can find the formula that is depth by total assets. Again we are talking here about the long term debts which includes long term borrowings and long term provisions. And total assets includes non current assets that is fixed assets, tangible fixed assets, intangible fixed assets and my and our current assets. So The objective of computing this ratio is to measure the safety margin again which is available to the lenders. It also measures the extent, extent to which debt can be covered by total assets. In case the firm does not have enough fund to pay it whether it can sell its assets and pay off its debt. So this is 
actually checking the ratio is helping to check the ability of the firm to pay its debt by, by total assets. So practical questions from DK Goel. First question number 24. The items mentioned over here are equity share capital of 3 lakh, preference share capital of 50,000, reserve 1 lakh 60,000, profit and loss, a loss of 50,000, long term borrowings 2 lakh, and provision for employees benefit 60,000. Let us classify the items first equity share capital is equity, preference share capital part of equity, reserve is a part of equity. Profit and loss, it's a loss of 50,000. So generally, when a company is having loss for a period, we'll deduct that amount of loss from the surplus, that is reserve and surplus. So we have to deduct this amount of loss from the reserve and surplus. Next comes long-term borrowings. This is a part of debt and provision for employees benefit. It is a long-term provision, so it's a part of debt. So in the debt, we'll write 2 lakh, of long term borrowing 60,000 of provision for employees benefit in the equity will write 3 lakh of equity share capital 50,000 of preference share capital 1 lakh 60,000 of reserve and from this will deduct 50,000 loss so the total of debt is 2 lakh 60,000 total of equity is 4 lakh 60,000 so the answer is 0 0.57 is to 1 next question number 26 tangible fixed assets of 24 lakh 50,000 Intangible fixed assets of 3 lakh and current assets of 3 lakh 34,000 is given. So we can see that the total asset is mentioned over here. Next comes current liability 84,000, long term borrowing 16 lakh and long term provisions 1 lakh 50,000. We need to find the depth to equity ratio. Now we have the items of depth given in the question but we cannot see any item related to shareholders fund or equity but total assets is mentioned in the question so if you remember the second formula of shareholders fund or equity that is total assets minus non-current liabilities and current minus current liability so first let us write the amount of total assets that is 24 lakh 50 thousand tangible fixed assets 3 lakh tan intangible fixed assets, 3 lakh 34,000 current asset. From this, I'll deduct current liability of 84,000 and non current liability that is long term borrowings of 16 lakh and 1 lakh 50,000 of long term provision. So, the total of equity is 12 lakh 50,000. My debt will include 16 lakh of long term borrowings and 1 lakh 50,000 of long term provision. The total is 17 lakh 50,000. So depth by equity putting the value of depth as 17,50,000 and equity as 12,50,000 answer is 1.4 is to 1. Next question number 28. The depth equity ratio of a company is 1 is to 2. Which of the following would increase, decrease or not change it? So either you can assume the values of depth and equity to be 10,000 or 1 lakh equity to be 20,000 or 2 lakh. Here I just uh, I have just applied a simple trick. So let's start with this. The first transaction is issue of equity shares. Now if I uh, issue equity shares that means my equity is increasing. As we all know the depth equity ratio formula is depth by equity. When my equity is increasing that means my denominator is increasing while on the other hand my numerator is same so if the denominator is increasing then the numerator that means the ratio will decrease so there will be answer is decrease next uh, next transaction cash receipt from trade receivables now trade receivables include sundry data and bills receivable both are part of current assets now if we are receiving cash from the current assets cash is also a part of current assets so neither my depth nor my equity is getting affected hence there will be no change in the ratio third tra uh, transaction is sale of goods on cash basis now when we are selling goods my inventory is decreasing 
on the other hand my cash is increasing so both are part of current assets cash and inventory both are part of current assets hence it is neither affecting the debt nor equity hence there will be no change fourth repayment of long term borrowings now when we are paying repaying the long term borrowings that means my debt is decreasing here debt is in the numerator that means my numerator is less than the denominator the denominator is same the denominator is remaining the same but the numerator is decreasing so ultimately the ratio will decrease next number fifth purchase of goods on credit now when we are purchasing goods that means stock is inventory is coming into the business or inventory is increasing on the other hand since it's a credit transaction my creditors will increase hence it is affecting the current assets and current liability but it is not affecting the debt and equity hence there will be no change in the debt equity ratio question number 29 compute debt to total assets ratio the question components in the question are total assets 35 lakh creditors 2 lakh 50000 total debts 32 lakh bills payable 20000 short term borrowings 1 lakh and outstanding expenses 30000 so we need the formula is debt to total debt divided by total assets now total assets is given in the question as 35 lakh also there is total debts mentioned in the question now keep one thing in mind if the question is given in the question if it is given that the total debts is a certain amount that indicates that it is the total of the liability side that indicates the total of the liability side that is inclusive of the long term debts and current liability so from this total debt we have to find the long term debts so the question is having mentioning total debts that means it is talking about the total of the outside liabilities inclusive of the long term ones and the current liabilities only debt means it is talking about the long term debts now let us find out the value of long term debts that is from the total debts i'll decrease all the current liabilities so total debt is 32 lakh and current liabilities we have bills pay uh, sorry creditors 2 lakh 50000 bills payable 20000 short term borrowings 1 lakh and outstanding expenses 30000 so the total of long term debts is 28 lakh now just putting it in the formula to my debt is 28 lakh and my total assets is 35 lakh so the answer is 0.8 is to 1 the last question of this video calculate debt to total asset ratio the components are 8% debenture 30 lakh loan from bank 10 lakh now a debenture and loan from bank both are long term borrowings short term borrowings 8 lakh 60000 short term borrowings as i have said earlier it is a current liability share capital of 20 lakh reserve and surplus of 5 lakh and surplus amount that is a profit of 2 lakh 20000 so we have already have the long term debt given in the question that is 8% debenture 30 lakh and long loan from bank that is 10 lakh which is a total of 40 lakh long term debt is 40 lakh total assets now in the question nowhere uh, we can find that the total assets have been mentioned so again applying the second formula of shareholders fund we will find the amount of total assets that is the formula was shareholders fund is equals to total assets minus non current liabilities minus current liabilities so what we'll do is we will add non current liabilities and current liabilities to the shareholders fund we can clearly see that the shareholders fund includes share capital and reserve and surplus so we will add the amount that is first we have added the debentures non current liabilities debentures of 30 lakh and long loan from bank that is 10 lakh to this we have added short term borrowings that is my current liability of 8 lakh 60000 and we have added the share capital that is 20 lakh share capital and reserve and surplus of 5 lakh 
this surplus which you have mentioned differently it is a part of the reserve and surplus thus we do not have to include it once again so the total of my to uh, the total assets is 73 lakh 60000 the total of total assets is 73 lakh 60000 i have forgot to mention it over here so putting it in the formula debt is 40 lakh and total assets is 70 lakh 73 lakh 60000 so my answer is 0.54 is to 1 that's all for today's video thank you